Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is case 153 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of ST elevation myocardial infarction that was complicated by kinking of the guide catheter as well as ventricular fibrillation. The patient presented with anterior STEMI. There is large ST segment elevation in the precordial leads. And coronary angiography done through right radial axis showed something missing on the LAD territory. That can be seen a little better here. There is a large diagonal branch, and the LED seems to be cut out at the takeoff of the diagonal branch. And the most useful view was actually the spider view, in which uh, we see that uh, there is likely a nub at the middle part of the LED where the diagonal takes off. The right coronary artery did not have any significant stenosis, so our plan was to perform PCI of the LED. We tried... Uh, various EBU guide catheters, but we were unable to engage. And during the attempt to remove the second guide catheter, it kinked and we had difficulty pulling it back. Actually, we could not straighten it out. We advanced the guide wire through it, but we could not make the guide wire to get to the guide catheter, so we could not get it out. What to do? And especially in a patient with an acute anterior myocardial infarction, time is of essence, so we don't want to spend too much time trying to engage. And as a result, what we decided is to switch to femoral axis. Femoral axis, still some challenge uh, to get in, but uh, we finally engaged the vessel. And then fortunately, we advanced a workhorse guide wire with a large band, and the tip of the guide wire actually entered right away to where we thought was a nub at the origin of the LED. The problem was that we could not advance any further. Every time we would try to advance and rotate the guide wire, what would happen is for the guide wire to actually prolapse into this large diagonal branch. So how to solve this problem? This is a problem of an angulated side branch. We try to push the wire. Instead of making it through the bend, the wire prolapses more distally. Here are four solutions. One is to use a different guide wire, for example, a polymer jacketed wire like the Pilot 200 or the Sion Black with a large bend. The second one is to use an angulated single lumen microcatheter, such as the Venture and the Supercross. The third one is to use the reversed guide wire technique. And the fourth one is to use a balloon at the takeoff of this branch, inflated, so that the guide wire is deflected from this balloon and advanced into the side branch. We started with the simpler things, which is to use a polymer jacketed wire. And actually, with the Sion Black, we were able to get into the LED. We predilated with a 2.5 millimeter balloon, and this restored flow into the LED. Unfortunately, shortly after that, the patient had bradycardia, and then he developed a ventricular tachycardia with a significant reduction in pressure. He did receive a shock but that did not actually convert to sinus rhythm. But fortunately, after a few seconds, he spontaneously converted into sinus rhythm, and that led to recovery of the blood pressure. So this was likely a reperfusion arrhythmia, and the patient did recover from it promptly. We then decided to stand it, and our initial plan was to stand as a T fashion, just uh, putting the stand right at the ostium of the LAD. We positioned it in different views. And then post-standing, we do have a nice result. Slight uh, roughness at the distal edge, although it didn't seem to quite have distal edge dissection. But to be 100% sure, we decided to image with optical coherence tomography. And uh, what was found is that uh, the stand was um, well expanded and well opposed. But as we move further back, it looks like we have actually jailed the origin of the diagonal branch, and we have some malaposition on the vessel and the proximal LAD. However, it was mild, and we decided to not perform any further intervention. So this was the final picture of the LAD, so we're good now. The ST segments are coming back, and the patient's discomfort is improving. However, we still have the issue of the king guy catheter. So how to get it out? The first step is to try to untwist it and insert the wire, but this did not work. The next step is to snare the tip so that we have more leverage to untwist it and get the wire through. So we try to do that. This is um, a JR4 along with an end snare. 
we advanced the snare further down, then pulled it back, and then withdrew the snare back, and we see that we captured the guide cutter fairly nicely. And this is how it looks. So we caught the tip of the kinked guide catheter. After doing that, we still had difficulty advancing the guide wire, but then we were able to fix the tip. We untwisted the guide catheter. And then after doing that, we were able to advance the guide wire through that area of kinking. We then released the snare and then advanced the guide wire through the kinked guide catheter and removed the entire system. And this is how it looks like. This is the position of the kink. And this is an illustration of what we did. This is pushing the end snare through the tip of a guide catheter. Every time we push, it comes out. And then here it is, how it worked. We pushed the, the snare out. The snare caught the guide. Then we pulled the snare back. So now the guide is trapped between the guide catheter and the device we're trying to snare. So several lessons from this case. The first one is that guide entrapment can happen if the guide can skin through radial axis. If that happens in an emergent case like STEMI, we don't want to spend time, but instead we want to change the axis as soon as possible to femoral and get the artery open and then come back and deal with the kinked guide on a second time at the end of the procedure. The second lesson is that wiring triangulation can be hard. However, using a polymer jacketed wire can be very useful. Third one is that post reperfusion arrhythmias can work, so one has to be ready to cardiovert or defibrillate as needed. OCD can help with optimizing the stent. And then for removing an entrapped kinked guide catheter, what worked in our case was to snare the tip of the guide so that the tip was fixed. Then we were able to rotate it, to untwist it, and advance an O35 wire through it and remove it. Thank you.